season to give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we're just so thankful for who you are and the might and power that you have. I thank you, Lord, for, for touching men and women, not just in here in Chrisfield, but around this world. Men and women that love you and love your appearing. And God, we are looking for you. We're looking for your return. We believe, God, that you're coming back just like your word says. And we pray, God, that men and women around this world will be ready when that trumpet sounds. So tonight, Lord, I thank you for uh, Parker and for touching his life. And I pray, God, that you'll minister to him and as his throat keeps uh, getting better and better. So, Lord, we thank you and ask your anointing to be a funny God and use him for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> to be in Crisfield, Maryland. Wow. Uh, you know, I've, I've been looking forward uh, to coming back and being with you all, and uh, this is one of my favorite stops in my whole career. I love coming to Crisfield. And, and you, you all are just so cool. I love you. Now, just to kind of just let you know, um, kind of the way that I'm going to do this tonight. So I need your I need your prayers and I need your your love. And I, do you love me? Yeah. Okay, I want you to act like. You. <laughs> but uh, tonight I, I, I'm I'm a little bit limited on some of the songs uh, that uh, that they're allowing me to do, and um, and as far as. Uh, some, some of the things I'm not going to be able to sing tonight that you may have come specifically to hear. And, uh, but if, if you'll kind of forgive me on some of those, kind of tonight. And uh, so we're just going to sit back and just let the joy of Jesus fill this room tonight. And, and if you want a blessing, folks, you're going to get one. And if you came to be bored, you're probably in the wrong church. So uh, before we kind of kick this thing off, uh, how many love Jesus? Yes. Let's put our hands together and give him a hand clap of praise. The time for you to be here. Good that told 
song. I might have to remember that for next week. <laughs> some, some of the songs that, uh, that I'll be singing for you tonight um, are uh, some songs that um, may not be sort of on the regular program, okay? Um, and uh, because since we kind of had to just change up the program a little bit, um, we, we just really had to just trash the original program and uh, put some other songs in there. And um, after all these years of uh, traveling with a group called Gold City, and uh, then launched uh, the solo career, which uh, Brother David and I were talking this afternoon, and it's been, I, I've been coming to Chrisville for 24 years. I'm really not even sure, come think about it, if I ever received a key to the city. Uh, I don't think I have. Uh, but I feel, I feel like I'm a part of this. And, um, and so the Gaither Homecoming videos have been an inspiration to a lot of people. And uh, one, of my, one of my best friends in this whole world that I can brag that I knew him was Mr. Jake Hess. And, uh, I love I love Jake, and uh, there are some songs that uh, that that he recorded through the years, and uh, this happens to be one. I'm going to do my best to remember the words uh, to this old song. And, uh, have I done this? One? Yeah. 
Then I became very concerned. <laughs> but he said, I've been thinking, he said, Dad, I, I've been thinking about what, what it would be like going to go on the road with you. And, uh, and I thought, man, that, that sounds like an incredible, incredible idea. And, and, and I mean, I'm proud of my family, my beautiful wife, Teresa, my oldest son, Ryan. Uh, uh, proud of him and uh, all, all these grandkids. That, that I'm proud of them, and even the cats. Um, Josh has got a cat at home, and uh, I mean, I love the cat, uh, but not like I want to take the cat home. You know, the cat. But I got to thinking about, you know, Josh being on the road out here with me, and uh, and and I'm like, he just got through with college and. All this, and and, um, and I'll be honest with you, it it just came to my mind after a few minutes of just being so joyful and excited, and then I thought, and I'm going to have to pay for this too. excited and setting on go and uh, this just feels like a night of praise a night of worship and uh, and I just feel like a little bit of celebrating for Jesus ought to go on tonight somebody say amen yeah. you, shout to the Lord. you probably know this song
somebody say yeah. 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 See what I, that's the most some, some of you all moved in about 45 years right there. Just like, I saw a couple of you out there going. And I'm like, well, praise the Lord. It's about time you move. And, uh, and you know what? Um, is anybody here, are y'all excited about Christmas? I, I am too. I, I'm excited about, about Christmas. And, uh, and I thought, you know, there's probably a couple of uh, Christmas songs that we might even fit in tonight. If, if, if y'all want to hear a couple of songs, act like you do anyway. Uh, all right, we'll just we'll just kind of go Christmas caroling. It's the most wonderful time of year With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be a good cheer It's the most wonderful time of year It's the happiest season of all With those holiday greetings and happy new year, when friends come to call, and the happiest season of all. For toasting and caroling out in the snow, in the single stories and tales of old stories of Christmas is long. Some of these songs, I just don't ever get to sing them. And, um, and so somehow or another, Josh flipped over to page four. So I started to put you a little silent night right in the middle of that. Uh, I don't know how it would have turned out, but we can't go close to doing that. Um, you know, I, I love uh, 
the Christmas spirit. I, I love, you know, just the Christmas tradition that goes along. And and the main the main focus of Christmas is is the fact that our Lord and Savior Amen. came in Amen. to this world. Amen. And I'm thankful for the birth of Jesus. Amen. And that's the real reason of why we we celebrate Christmas. But what a wonderful, happy, joyful time it is when families can come together and, um, and, and can just enjoy uh, eating and just fellowship together. And, um, you know, and you just pray that that beautiful, wonderful day that nobody gets in a fight. It's just a good, smooth, smooth day. Uh, but I, I want to do uh, a song, Josh. This is, uh, this is one that... Uh, I don't know if anybody will remember this Christmas song, but we were putting together um, this this latest Christmas CD, and I doubt I doubt most of you have this new Christmas CD because I've not been here since I recorded. And um, but I decided this is a neat title, and so I recorded this song because I I wanted to call the CD Christmas Dreaming, and. Um, and so this song is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just a sweet, sweet Christmas song. And uh, I just need to think that's it. Christmas Dreaming, Christmas Dreaming,
said I probably wouldn't be able to hear with these in-ear monitors. <laughs> I couldn't hear before. <laughs> so he's going he's gonna to reboot that. because there, There's a couple songs that I really wanted to do uh, tonight because uh, there were actually a couple people that came up and requested a couple songs that, uh, that, that, that I don't know. And so... Uh, <laughs> So in order to be able to do these, I, I'm going to have to have to have some lyrics. So I'm, I'm going to let him let him do that right there. And um, you know, this has been um, an interesting year uh, for me. And um, I could um, I, I've tried um, all day long to try and figure out, um, you know, how could I give my testimony and how could I kind of sum things up in a shorter version and we, we actually we actually talked about that a little bit and uh, it almost requires the whole entire testimony uh, for, for I think the whole thing to make sense and uh, let, let me just go ahead and uh, uh, go through just a little bit of this and maybe if we'll break it up into two parts it won't seem so long <laughs> but back in back in June um, I was in, in the bathroom and I was shaving one morning and um, and as I was as I was shaving I noticed that um, there, there was a lump in my neck and, uh, and I'm like well that, that looks a little unusual you know but may, maybe it's something else and we'll, we'll just move on because um, I've never been sick uh, I've never been in the hospital very blessed my whole life and I you know so it's kind of like if you're sick then you gotta you're supposed to act like you're sick you know and uh, so I, I stood there in front of the mirror and I kind of looked at it and I'm like okay all right, well I'll just keep an eye on it um, so after about a couple of weeks um, you know I just kind of kind of just noticed that it, it looked like it was get, just getting larger you know, and and uh, so I said, I, I better just go to the doctor, get this thing looked at, and let's go ahead and uh, you know get get some sinus medication, you know, and let us move on. And uh, and so he was looking at it, and um, he said, Ivan, he said, uh, I tell you, to, to make us both feel better, he said, uh, I'm gonna sit you over here, and let's do let's have a, a biopsy done, and let, let's just Let's just clear it out and make sure, make sure everything's good. Well, um, by then, we're, we're looking at the end of June or first of first week of July. And so while I'm waiting for the report to come back, I realize that the doctor's on vacation. All right, and now, now I've got a serious question. Why do doctors go on vacation? <laughs> at, at one of those most inopportune times. Well, I, uh, I sat there and I waited, you know, and that was enough time for a, a little bit of negative to kind of start creeping in to where, okay, I'm getting a little bit nervous. You know, there's too, too much time. And, um, and so I just sat there and I waited. My mind was racing and I'm like, this is not fun at all. And, um, and so finally I, I got the phone call and uh, one of the nurses said, uh, Mr. Parker, we, we are very sorry, but, uh, but he came back positive. And I, I sat there on the other end of the phone and I said, 
Okay, let me get this straight. So you, you're telling me that I've got cancer. And she said, yes, sir. That's what I meant, positive. And um, I, boy, I, you know, I, I know there's a lot of you that have gone down this path before. And um, uh, just I'm getting a little static on that computer thing. Um, so y'all know exactly what, what I'm, the process that I'm going through here. And uh, so all of this negative stuff all of a sudden started flooding my brain. And all the while, you know, I'm like thinking, you know, I've trusted God my whole entire life. I'm not going to stop trusting God now. If I've ever needed God, I need God now. And so as we were going through the process of planning and all of this kind of stuff, and they, they sent me to an oncologist, and, and uh, you know, he went through the whole process of re reading the CT scans, and we, you know, he was saying words that I didn't know, you know. If somebody asked me, what did they say, I couldn't tell you, because I never heard some of those words. And he said, um, Ivan, he said, uh, we're, we're going to go through about six weeks of chemo and radiation. And now, mind you, uh, let me explain this. Where the cancer was, it, it, it was a very small spot on the back of my tongue, and it was back where it goes down. So you can't, you can't see it. There's no, no visible view of it. And that's whenever I found out what it was like to have a camera shut down the throat, uh, through your nose. Uh, that's the worst feeling in the world. Just go ahead and do surgery. <laughs> and um, so he showed it to me on the screen, and he says, this little small spot. He said, the good news is, he said, is that um, we caught it early. And he said, uh, so what we're going to have to do is go through this radiation and chemo. And I said, so stop right there. Let me ask you something. So if you do radiation, then that means you're going to be like really going into here with radiation. And he said, yeah. And I said, let me tell you what I do. And I told him, I'm a singer, gospel music, all this kind of stuff. And I said, I don't want you putting radiation around my vocal cords. I said, this is uh, something very, very important. I said, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to do anything else to sing. And if you mess that up, I'm living at your house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure he had a real nice sound. <laughs> and he he looked at me and um, and I said, Doc, I said, seriously, I said, there's there's a lot of people out there that are expecting me to come and sing at, for them. And to, uh, you know, I sing gospel music, so therefore I've got a very important message that I've got to give these people. And I said, so I can't afford to have radiation. So I'm just going to say no. He said, hang on just a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. He left the room and he came back in about 10 minutes and he handed me a card and uh, he said, uh, I need you to be downtown at Vanderbilt at the vocal clinic Monday morning at 7 o'clock. And I checked out and went, 7 o'clock. <laughs> He said, yes, 7 o'clock, don't be late. <laughs> so the vocal clinic downtown Nashville, where a lot of singers go, he said, I want you to go down there. He said, I've already called the surgeon, and he said, we're going to see if there's a different way to do things. And so I walked in uh, to the 
local clinic that morning. And, um, and the doctor had already viewed all the scans and he saw exactly uh, what he was looking for. And, uh, and he said, I, he said uh, I've got some good news. He said, yes, we did catch this early. And he said, the other great part is we can do it surgically. And you won't have to do radiation. And you know, so so God God was sprinkling his way through this whole thing from the very, very beginning. God was just sprinkling blessings out as I was as I started this journey. And then here we are, and he's still showing up. And so I said, okay, what, what, what's the next thing we do? And he said, well, the first opening I've got is August the 24th. And I'm like, man, man that's, that's three weeks. And I, what am I going to do in three weeks? Well, I just kept singing. Because I, I wasn't sick. I didn't feel bad. It, it didn't stop me from singing. And so I sang all the way up until... Three days before surgery, and the uh, and then the only reason I didn't sing those other couple of days uh, was because they they wanted me to rest, rest up for surgery. Okay, and um, last week, and I'm I'm skipping a few things here. Last week I went in for a three month checkup, and. Um, I don't know why they have to keep proving it to themselves, I guess, but he, he told me last week, he said, Ivan, you're, you're, you're cancer free. Amen. And I was like, I know. <laughs> Tell me something I know. And, uh, I've been praying all along. I said, Lord, I don't know why. I don't know why. I've, I've, been, I've been singing for you. I've, I've been telling people about, about you for 40 years. I've been traveling all over the world sharing the gospel. Lord, what are you doing? Why am I in this place? Why? Surely, Lord, there's, there's something that, you know, Lord, please, and, and I prayed this prayer. This is one of the first prayers that I, that I actually prayed. And I said, Lord, if there's something that, that I need to know, something I need to learn, God, please don't let me miss it. <laughs> let me get it. And, uh, and I said, if I'm supposed to uh, tell somebody through this journey, if I'm supposed to tell them about you and the saving knowledge of you, then Lord, th th you're going to have to orchestrate this. Because I have no idea who, who I'm going to be talking to from now until then. I don't know. So you're going to have to speak. You're going to have to let me know. And... Um, here just a few weeks ago, I, I, I just got to thinking, well, was there anybody that I missed talking to that I should have? And uh, and all I could think was, well, I don't know, maybe I need to talk to this surgeon. I don't know. And how do you tell a surgeon something that he thinks he already knows? That didn't sound too nice, but uh, a lot of times those kind of educated people like that. They've got different views on what God is all about. And I said, Lord, if, it, if there's at some point, I said, Lord, show me how to do it because I really don't know how to present this. Well, last week, um, whenever we finished with our conversation and he did all the tests again and he went through all of that and, and I'm not I'm not giving any bragging to, to me. I'm bragging on God. 
I, I want to make that clear. I'm bragging on God. And so after we finished everything last week, um, he said, I, he said, uh, go take a walk with me. Okay? And I didn't think much about it other than um, we're, we're going to take a walk. <laughs> and, um, and we walked into next door to the actual focal clinic, and we were walking down the hallway, and um, there were pictures on the wall of all the walls of every country music artist and any kind of gospel artist that had come through there through the years. And he said, look at all these who came, came before you. And he said, there's pictures on the wall here. And I was like, yeah, I know a lot of these people. And he said, would you mind bringing a picture up here and sign it? He said, I want, I want your picture on this wall. And I said, I think I can do that. We, we sell them for five dollars. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't tell them that, but, but I actually thought, thought about it. And, uh, <laughs> And so he said, I, I want your picture on, on this wall, if that would be okay with you. And I said, sir, I, I'll be honored. I'll be honored. I said, can I tell you a little bit about what happened during this whole process? And, and um, I said, in singing gospel music, I said, I sing in front of thousands and thousands of all throughout the year, we do concert dates, we do tour dates, and, and, and we do a lot of traveling, and I, I've got friends all over the world that I love to sing to. And I said, I announced that uh, because we were gonna have to move and cancel three months of concert dates, I said, I had to tell them what was going on, and, uh, and I said, what I got back was that the people started praying. They started praying for me. And I said, Doc, there were thousands and thousands and thousands. I was blown away. I couldn't believe the response that I got from you. And so many people reached out in love. They embraced, embraced me and reminded me God's got this. Over and over and over, they said the same thing. God's got this. Just get better. Don't worry about it. God's got it. We're covering. We're covering. And I said, and so I'm telling the doc this. And I thought, well, instead of just directly just asking him, you know, did he know Jesus? I just said, well, I'm just going to tell him my experience with Jesus and then he'll know. I said, so, I said, when you gave me the schedule of what time the surgery was going to start and what how long it was going to take i said i actually posted that that you're going to start surgery here and surgery is going to end here i said now i said what happened thousands upon thousands of people all over the world they took that time yeah, and they started praying And I don't know why God gave me this to tell him. I said, but when you wheeled me into surgery that morning, I said, there was an army that came by.
And I said, every time you lifted your arms, I said, God was lifting your arms for me. Every time you moved your fingers, God was moving your fingers. I said, that's the God that I serve. I said, all we are doctors, we're just instruments for God to do the miracle. And I looked behind that mask that, that, that he had on and, and I couldn't see his smile, but I saw his eyes as all of a sudden they lit up and he was smiling so big. He didn't contradict the word I said. Now this, this is something, and I, I've got to say this, I, I, I love to feel love from folks. I think love is very, very important. And that's what I felt from you folks was love. That's what I felt. That's what got me through it. But then all of a sudden, as I said that, and his face lit up behind that mask, he said, he said, Ivan, can I hug you? I knew something was right there. And I hugged him and I said, Doc, happy Thanksgiving. So folks, listen. I know I'm not ashamed of the tears. I'm not ashamed of any way that, that I am today because I live every day celebrating. I live every day thanking God that every step I take, my hand is in his. He's walking with me. He's talking with me. And, and folks, let me tell you something. I love where I'm at today because I feel his arms all, all over me. No matter what you're going through today, no matter how big that mountain may seem, this is what I came by to tell you today. He holds you in the palm of his hand. And his word says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Through any storm, through any trial, through anything that may be thrown your way, listen, we are victorious because of Jesus. I didn't know I was going to come to preach to you tonight. I didn't know really what to expect. And I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to say tonight. Um, because that's, that's another thing that um, I've had a lot of people come up and go, so you're going to start back singing in three months? Shouldn't you be taking a little bit more time off? No. No. So you see, I'm here by the grace of God. Amen. And I'm singing. So when this whole process started, I didn't know where it was going to head. I didn't know where it was going to lead. And uh, and then after the surgery, uh, there's so much God. I could stand here for an hour and, and tell you all of this stuff. Uh, but when the surgery took place, um, you know, I was like, Lord, I know that you've got this. And then that then that little negative negative little bird sitting up there on my shoulder said you never know this may be it you may never sing again and I'm making this up right here but you may never go back to Crisville, Maryland but folks look at us here tonight 
We're singing and we're rejoicing. We're happy in the Lord. song, I'm the Lamb. I, I've never, I've never sang this one on stage before, and uh, if you can pop those lyrics up there for me, uh, I'm going to see if I can sing this for her. And, uh, sweetie, do you love the Lord? I just thought I'd ask. I knew what the answer would be. So many times I strayed away from Jesus as a lamb that leaves the flock without a And the time soon came when I'd gone too far and stumbled. And the more I tried, the more I'd lose my way.
played it just like I taught him. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Babe, you doing good tonight. And praise God for you. And uh, praise God for your choice to play for him. Well, folks, we're, we're going to um, actually, uh, I, I was trying to figure out, I didn't even see what time it was, and uh, I don't want to keep y'all too late. <laughs> but I might anyway. Uh, but we got to figure out a, a spot somewhere in, in, in the program uh, to uh, receive receive a love offering here. Um, uh, folks, I'm not going to stand up here and beg you for a dollar. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, but <laughs> we, um, you know, being in this position where we had to take off, uh, we were kind of forced to take off for three months and, uh, and not do any traveling. And uh, this is part of our living as well as uh, our ministry. And um, Folks, I'm, I'm just going to ask you tonight if you could, uh, if you could just love us enough that you could put an extra zero. <laughs> and I, I know that there's there's some that you could give a little bit more, maybe, maybe than others. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask you if you would to do that. And uh, God has been so good to us. Amen. Been so good to all of us. And I'm thankful that we can share encouragement everywhere that we go. It's not a gloom and doom message. It's encouragement. And what you're doing tonight in this offering is you're believing and you're trusting in our ministry and, and in what we do. And uh, that, that we're going to carry the message from Chrisville forward. And you're just, you're just sending us out. You're becoming a part of our ministry and a part of what we do. And God sees what, what you're doing right now, and, and he's going to bless it. Listen, if there's anything else I have found out through this whole thing, is that everything that we've ever been taught about God is true. Everything we've been taught. We can't outgive God. And no matter what we do, God, God is going to continue to open doors. God is going to continue to push this ministry even further than we've ever comprehended. Because we're living in a time today, folks, it's time for an encouraging message. If you watch all the news networks and you keep up with what's going on, listen. And I feel like I, I'm really impelled to tell you this tonight. I've read the end of the book. I know you have to, but we've read the end of the book. And folks, listen, we are victorious because of God. So I'm going to ask you tonight in, 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 in writing, writing your checks, and uh, we, we didn't discuss that. They just write out the Ivan Parker Ministries. Is that what we're, I guess, what we're doing? We didn't even talk about this. Just to be safe, just put Ivan Parker Ministries on there, okay? Um, and then if, then if you're just unsure how to do it, just put Ivan Parker Ministries. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And then if you want to just dig dig down deep and uh, get get some of those, I guess, larger bills <laughs> in your wallet, that would be most appreciated too. God is going to bless you, folks, for your giving. He, he, he is. He's going to bless you. And so don't you worry about that. God's going to bless it. But I'm going to ask you tonight to... Uh, Take, take part in, in what we're doing and become a part of our ministry. We do that. And uh, so, yeah, let's, do we want the ushers to come forward? And we'll just, uh, we'll just ask the question. And I, I wasn't supposed to sing the Midnight Cry uh, because it's, uh, it's a very powerful song. And, uh, 
and it kind of puts it up there into that range that I'm not supposed to be singing in. But folks, I, I really feel impressed. Uh, will, will you help me sing the chorus? When we get there, I'll sing the verse if, verses if you'll help me sing the choruses. Will you do that? And folks, we've got to do this song. So as the last and final song,
Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a sweet night. What a sweet night. And folks, thank you for loving us. Thank you for uh, thank you for just reaching out to us and and uh, and keeping us out there on the road. Give it to Pastor. Thank you for giving us a place to sing tonight. And uh, couldn't think of anywhere. I'd, I'd rather come after a three month. God bless you all and folks listen we're, we're going to be uh, back there in, in the back and uh, we'd love to help you with a CD or whatever and uh, sign something for you keep us in your prayers when you do that because yeah. uh, it's pretty evident the devil don't like what we do and uh, we're just going to keep pressing on and keep this encouraging, this wonderful, positive message of Jesus. We're going to keep pushing it. But we don't have that much longer before that trumpet's going to sound. So we've got to keep going. So God bless you. Thank you.